Well, hello, man cavers. What are we doing today? We're going to be fitting the electronic ignition to this lovely little TR6. So, let's have a look under the bonnet at what we're up with. Here we are, a 2.5 litre BMC straight six. So, we're going to change this whole distributor and, yeah, put an electronic one in there. Get rid of this old one. So, let's roll the credits and get on with this job. Welcome to the man cave. Let the games begin. Alright, first things first, we're going to see what we need to do this job. Here's what come in our kit. A new set of leads. I'm assuming that's a distributor. Four spark plugs, a coil, and another two spark plugs. There we go. There we have everything we need to do our electronic ignition kit. A book of destructions that we're not going to be using. No, we will have a look at them. There's our new distributor. Let's get rid of these boxes and let's get this distributor out and see what we've got. So here we have a complete, a complete distributor. Worm drive, that will be for the tachometer. Your clamp. And this little bung, I think, because this just goes in there, look, there we go. And when you turn your distributor, that turns that. And I think that little cap goes in there. But we shan't put that in until we'll put some grease in there. Keep him nice and greased. So we'll leave him out for the minute. There we go. So, here is your electronic ignition distributor. Very simple. The points and condenser have simply been replaced by an electronic module which works on a hall sensor effect so yes very very reliable very very good much better than the early electronic ignition systems and certainly much better than points and condensers a lot more reliability a lot better spark i did this already once on my old xj6 you probably remember that video, maybe you don't, I don't know. But first thing, we need to prepare this engine to have the distributor removed. Before we go hawking all the leads off, we need to make sure we put the new distributor in in the right orientation to what this one is. So, we'll just pop our cap off. Ah... Uh, there we go. Where's the lead draw coil? We can get that one out of the way. There we go. Right. This actually has an early form of electronic ignition already fitted. It has the early system. Whatever's going on there? That rotor arm is not locking onto the... How is this car even running? This rotor arm doesn't even fit on there right, look. Look at that. I'm pushing down on that. And it's turning over the cam. No wonder this car wasn't running right. Timing must have been all over the place. Look. You push right down and you can still turn that rotor arm over that cam. Rotor arm is also badly burned. I mean, that would rub up on the edge of a tyre, but that is really bad. See, this is what happens when you retro and put new kits on old distributors. 
they never fit quite right. I mean, that rotor arm is horrific, look. I mean, we always have that little bit of play, but when you've got it where it'll actually bounce over the cam, because the rotor arm just ain't holding on, I mean, that is, that is terrible. Anyhow, we've got it pushed in so that distributor is pretty much where it needs to be. What we're going to do is turn the engine until we get our distributor facing a point that isn't going to change. So we know we're going to put the new distributor in the same place. So I'm going to point it. I'm going to have this rotor arm probably pointing to this knob on the oil cap. Then when we put the new one in, we can make sure that's in the same orientation. So we need to turn our engine over. Until... Uh, until that turns, is that a viscous span on there? No, it isn't. Ah, can we turn the engine this way? Oh, we can turn it on the fan, look. No, no socket on the crank snout needed. Oh, this is good. So we'll just keep turning this until we have got That rotor arm facing. I'm looking square onto it. It's pointing directly. I don't like how that damn timing is set. So this engine turns which way? This way. So I'm going to have that against there. Of course, that's where that'll be when that's running. There we go. Excellent stuff. So that'll do. So what we're going to do is take this distributor out. We're going to take our tachometer drive off. Because the taco drive runs off the distributor on these. Let's get this tripod a little more stable for you guys. There we go. There we go. We just need to get this tachometer drive off this engine. So we've got to undo this knurled. There we go. Don't bother about disconnecting your battery. On a modern car, you wouldn't get away with this. But on these old ones, when the key is off, the car's pretty much dead. So disconnecting the battery isn't really, I would say, an essential. So we've got our speedometer, our um, tachometer drive out, beg your pardon. Now we want a 7 16th, that look like. To undo this pinch bolt. On the clamp. There we go. Well, that's loose now. We might have to open him up with a screwdriver. Who knows? We'll go a bit more with it. There we go. All right. Now we need to just undo these coil wires. Let's get this king lead out of the way because we're changing this coil as well. If you're unsure about where your wires go, just get your pocket machine out and just snap a photo. Then you'll just know when everything's right. What size are these? I thought they might have been 8 mils, but they're not 8 mils, they are 10s, yeah they are 10 mils, great stuff, so we'll just pop him off, pop these wires off out the way, Put any nuts and washers you had on there in the right place. There we go. This should pull off here. There we go. That should come off there. 
this coil quite obviously earth on the engine block because there's no earth wire. There we go, keep all our bolts. I mean, we've got new ones, but we'll keep them anyhow. There we go. We have now got our distributor disconnected from the engine. So there shouldn't be anything holding this distributor onto this engine now. So I'm hoping that will just pull out. It might not, but it should. There we go. There is our distributor out. Our old one. Nice and easy look. As you can see, this is the original Lucas distributor. We shan't throw that away. You know Man Cave, he doesn't throw a lot away. Now, shall we keep this original clamp to keep the car more original, or shall we put the new clamp on? Hmm... We'll put the new clamp on, because that might match the distributor better. It just might match it better, so... There we go. We'll just put our new clamp on. Don't chuck the old ones away, just in case the new one don't quite fit right. Then we'll prep our new distributor. Are ready to go on? But we can be putting this new clamp on already. There we go. There's our new clamp on. But we won't tighten that down yet. Because we need to obviously get the new distributor in. But before we do that, we need to assemble this new distributor. So here we are, we have our new distributor. What we want to be doing, get a finger full of grease, just grease this, grease this cog up for the speedo drive. We're getting some good old grease on there, look. The rest of this grease, crank him in this hole, get a bit in there, there you go. There. That'll just help everything along. And then drop our tachometer drive in that hole. There we go. There we go. There is our new distributor with its packed grease. Wipe your excess off. But we don't need that for the minute. And then we can just pop our cap. Make sure that's turning. Turn your distributor by hand. There we go. Excellent. Pop that little cap in. And just give him a little tap down. Excellent. So our cap is now installed, all nice and flush. Distributor turns. So give our new distributor a nice wipe down so that's nice and clean for when the customer comes. There we go. And now we can get this installed in the engine. One other thing, put some oil around this O-ring for when we pop it in. So we'll move back here. There we go. Excellent stuff. We want to take our distributor cap off. There we go. Now remember the vacuum advance sat this way. Do you know, look at that. That rotor arm is pointing in the right direction. Look, would you believe it? Our tachometer drive lines up. So if we now just oil our O-ring round here put a bit of oil all around that o-ring there we go all around that shaft lube this shaft lube this o-ring 
put a bit on that gear end and then we can drop him in and hopefully let me wipe my hands because we want nice uh, we want nice non-lubricated gloves for this job because we've got to make sure this distributor is located in this engine all right we're over that I don't like this clip, I ain't allowing the distributor to go all the way down. We should feel it click into place when that locks in with the, uh, with the drive. There. There we go. Do you hear that? That rotor arm just clicked into place. So we know that distributor is now in the right place. Or very roughly. So we can put our put our clamp bolt back in and give him a tighten up there we are come on get in there get in there now I think this old girl was suffering with bad starting. Now I know, I know that these TR6s, they had a lot of problem with the petrol injection system on them. It's an old mechanical injection system on this. Yeah, it's an old mechanical injection system on this, so... Right, that's got enough turning so we can adjust the timing. Because obviously this one's the one that locks the strip in place, that's just holding the clamp. So next thing is to make sure we get our new cap on right. Get your old cap, just place it. Don't really matter where about on that distributor goes. Just look which rotor arm is pointing to this. Take this lead off. There we go. The rest of them you can pull out the way. Just leave that one on. Why are we doing this, you say? It's time the engine up. Before we do a lot of timing, and now them leads are out the way, let's connect. Let's connect our connections back up to the coil. If you remember, no, we're putting a new coil on, aren't we, Finn? Remember that? Oh, yes, indeedy. I forgot we are fitting a new coil as well. Can I actually get a socket in there to do that? Or is this a spanner job? It's going to be a lot easier, you know, if I used a spanner to get in there and do these. Well, there you go. Or will they crack off and come undone with the fingers? Oh, yes. Let me get this coil off, and then we'll be back. I'm sure you don't want to see me messing around taking a coil off. Or do you? I don't know. We might leave it rolling. I will keep talking, just in case. All right, that shouldn't need slacking on that one. No, that is on a that is on a fixed bracket. Okay, I thought there might be a slot in that, so that slid out one side, but no, it doesn't. There we go. There we go. There's our coil out the way. So let's undo our new coil. 
and see what we got in here. I haven't had this undone, to be honest. So, there we go. Here is our nice shiny new coil. Look at that. Beautiful. And we have the live this side as well, so that's even in its slot in the right place. Excellent stuff. Best practice. Of course, this coil us to the engine. Give them a wipe down, make sure that's nice and clean inside there. Then we can get our coil. Bolted on. If we can line the bolt holes up. Come on. There we go. There is plenty of side-to-side -side movement on that coil because we've got elongated holes both sides which actually makes it considerably easier to get the coil lined up. There we go. Coil bolted on, let's get him tightened down because there's no reason he can't be tightened down. Then we'll get to setting this timer and getting this car actually started. Alright, let's get our coil bolt. Tighten down. It is a lot easier with a spanner. I don't know why I didn't use a spanner before, but there you go. We now got a spanner on the job. I do love these old motors. Nice and easy to work on. All these old 70s, 60s cars, lovely to work on. They really are. Look how easy everything is to get to here. No plastic engine covers. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely no problems at all actually getting to these parts. If that was a modern car, that would be a right nightmare. It really would. There'd be covers and plastic clips. And all this rubbish to deal with. We have got none of that. We've just got nice, basic, simple mechanics. Tell you what I ought to have done before I put that distributor in, I ought to have just took them spark plugs out, didn't I? That would have been a lot easier to get them spark plugs out if I'd have just left the distributor out. But I didn't want to risk anything dropping into that distributor hole, so get him back in. There we go, as soon as possible. Just get E back in. There we go. That are all done. Now we can be getting our wires on. So we can pull this clip off here now because we know that's not needed. That one goes on that side. Make sure you get it on there right, not just on the plastic sleeve. This red one goes this side. And the black one goes the other side on here. Went on. There we go. So they're both on. Our coil wires are out of the way. Excellent stuff. Make sure they're tight. 
they probably will have been tightened from the factory. No, nope. all right, Mills, look. Yeah, they probably will have been tightened from the factory, but we'll just check. Never hurts to check. Yeah, they are tight, look. Nope, that one in. Good job we checked that, look. There we go, don't over tighten them. Don't give them three ooga doogas. Don't even give them one ooga dooga. Just give it a little nip. There we are. Now, we need to put our new distributor cap on there. So locate our one cap. Our one cap, our new cap. Which locks in there. And we know this rotor arm is pointing to this one. Yeah, the one closest this oil filler cap. Yeah, that's locked in. So now that's locked. Put he down. Put he up. There. So we know this one is the one the rotor arm's pointing to. So it's going to be firing on this one now. Yeah? And our rotor arm travels this direction, so anti-clockwise. So all we need to know is what cylinder is now firing, which we know is this one, because that's where the old distributor was. So now you need to know your firing order. So, here is our firing order. 153624. Write that on your scrap of paper. So we know now that ah, this is one, two, so we know two is firing now, so we know two is on to there. We can time it up from there. What's the one after two? Four. So this one got to go to number four. What's after four? One. This one got to go to number one. And so on. And that's how we can put our new leads on. And then we should, hence I say, should be right. You can do belt and braces. If you watch my Daimler video, what I did was I actually set number one cylinder to top dead center. Put in the distributor and just see which lead was pointing to number one. But on this one, I'm going to do it a different way, just using how the old leads were. So what leads have we got here? Let's get all these lined up. Let's get these lined up to see which length leads we've got. Because these are meant to be a nice set of tailored leads for this car. Right, where would be the longest lead? That would be the one that go to number one, wouldn't it? So that's going to be this one. Uh, so we know that distributor is now firing number two. What comes after number two? What comes after number two? This distributor is now firing number two. So what comes after number two? When the distributor's going this direction, don't, worry, don't forget that direction, so it'll come to this one, then this one, then this one, then this one. So after two, it goes to four. So we know this one got to come to number four, which is in here. See what I mean? So I think what we're going to do before we start timing is change these spark plugs quickly. So we can actually get them on how they should be and be done with it. So let's get these plugs out. That'll tell us a million things about this car. Because when the gentleman drove it down here the other day, it smelt like it was running rich. And there was quite a bit of sort of white powder and smoke not blue smoke certainly certainly won't burn an oil but it did smell very rich
that one actually looks quite good. It actually looks quite good. Let's slacken these all off. Can we get this plug out of here very easy? Well, we've got to take one of the extensions off to get into that one. No, I think we've got to go direct on the socket with that one. This is why I really ought to change. I've done these plugs while I had the distributor out, didn't I? Never mind. We're getting there. Be careful not to knock these fuel hoses because the last thing you want to do is start rupturing these plastic fuel hoses because they are injector pipes. And that is the only thing well, when you're working on someone else's car, you need to be a little bit careful with everything. Because if you break it, you've got to fix it. We're just going to buzz these plugs out. What's number six look like? Uh, a bit black. I've seen a lot sootier though. I have seen a lot sootier. But there you go. I do wonder if that coil would be better off having an earth wire on it instead of just having the body earthed to the engine block. What do you guys think? That just seems a bit alien that there's no earth wire down there, it's just earth and through this clamp. The old coil was just the same. Not sure I like that idea. We might have to do a continuity test on that with the multimeter before we actually switch this thing on. And if we need to add an earth wire, we can. These plugs actually don't look as bad as I thought they was going to. I thought they was going to be very, very black and sooty, but they aren't. But he did complain of bad starting with this car. Yeah, he complained of bad starting, so... But I did sort of say to him it may not be the ignition. I mean, it won't hurt to put this new kit on at all. Here we have triple electrode plugs, look, so we don't need to gap them, they can go straight in. They can go straight in. Lovely. Triple electrode plugs in a TR6, look. Just check none of them are nipped up, which they are not. I'll be back when i got these plugs in. If not, this video is going to take forever. There we go. There you go. There is our plugs all in. Now we can go back to setting this timing. Looking at a little bit of card again, we know this one's two, after that comes four, which is this one, and after that comes one, which is this one. So this one goes to number one. So we want to put our longest lead, just plump him in here, and run him down to number one. Just like so. Oh, them new leads don't have. 
them new leaves aren't half um, grippy. Come on, get on that plug. There we go, that one's on there. Yep. So, two, four, one, two, three, four. Do we want one of the shortest leads we've got? Yep, we've got one of the shortest leads we've got just to come on to. I'm going to put the lead on the plug first. There you go. There you go. What comes after four? Two, four, one. This one is five. Which is this one in here, so we need the next shortest lead. Another rule of thumb with most of these old cars, wherever number one is, on the distributor number six is normally directly opposite that's a little hack so if one is well in this case one is two four one one you'll know this one's number six that's normally how it works so yeah Two, four, one, five, then three, then six, yeah. This one goes to five. We want to now replace this original old lead. We know that's got to go to number two. So we can put E down on there on that plug. There we go. Put E to number two. And then this final one can go to number six. And that should be our timing or firing order correct. There we go. This one is our king lead that goes into the top of our coil. And then into the top of our cap. There, take that old lead out of the way. So we should be roughly timed up now to the point where we can actually start the engine. But I am going to check, because I don't like one little bit how that hasn't got an earth on that. We will, if we've got a good earth, if it goes straight to continuity from here to the battery's negative terminal, I shan't worry about it. But I don't like how that's just earthing directly through that coil. 
you can wipe out one little bit. Now I'm going to just take the ply out of this clamp and nip it a little bit. Just nip it a little. Just to hold. That distributor in place. Right, that's starting to nip. Can we still turn that? Yes, we can. Excellent. We need to get our tachometer drive in here. There we go. And because I've had this I've been turning this now. I am going to double check that far and all this rope. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's going to come right. Let's pop this off. Make sure this rotor arm is still pointing to this one. It is, look. There we go. Always pays to just double check for the time it takes to pop the cap off. Alright, let me get my multimeter and see if there is continuity through there. So here's our multimeter. Let's get him to continuity. We should get a little beep beep here. There we go. Have we got continuity from the battery to there? We have, look. Pretty good continuity, so yeah, it is earthed. <sighs> That's how it was, so we will see. I think now we are ready for the grand start. These are quite plug and play, literally. You have your live wire going to your coil. The other spade of that is just the red wire that goes to the module in the distributor. The black wire of the module go on to the other side of the coil. They are that easy to wire in. Right. Now I haven't started this car cold and it's been here about three days. But I was told that it does crank for a bit before she starts. Of course, she has to build fuel pressure because there's no electric pump on this. This down here, that's a mechanical fuel injector pump. We're going old school. you got to remember, this is 1974. Many, 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 in fact, most cars back then were still on carburetors. So having a 74 car that was fuel injected quite the thing. It really is. <sighs> so, these wires are not catching on anything, are they? No. They sit there all nicely. They're not dangling on the engine block. We will probably tie them away in a little bit. But for now, I just want to see if this old girl will start. I guess we'll see, won't we? So take all our packaging out of the way. Take our old spark plugs out of the way. There we go. Put them old plugs on our bench. Let me get in the car. I don't think that distributor is going to turn. It shouldn't do. 
If that to stop at a turn when I crank the engine and throw the timing out, just let me know. Let's see if she fires up. And have I got that firing order right? I guess we'll see. Right you flow in here. Oh dear me. Right. We ain't got a choke on this, have we? No. Let's see what we got. Well there, it's running. It did not start very well. Oh, that's the wrong way. Right, I think we need to get a timing light on here now. And see how we're going. So we'll get our strobe light. You can tell us a long while since I used this bugger she got cobwebs on her love. There we go. So we'll go a low RPM on our little gauge here. We'll connect it up to the battery. Here and here. Connect this one on our coil. If I can get the damn thing on. Right, finally we have a strobe light. So we need to shine he down on this timing mark. I don't know whether I'm going to about to get the camera in there for you guys to see that. But we've got a shine down onto our timing mark.
which we get to from the top of a lot of it. And we are just our distributor. Until we get a time and mark lined up. I think we're in about the right place. Let me switch her off so I need to look up the timing settings. At the minute that's 16 degrees. I need to have a quick look. But I'm doing it by ear at the same time and that actually sounds sweet as a nut now. temperature. It isn't smoking anywhere as bad as it was when it come here. Right, I'm going to switch her off and look up what timing we're going to do. Yeah. So let me look up these timing settings and then we'll be back. So, I've just looked it up and the timing can be set anywhere between 12 and 16 degrees. Now, when I had my light going down there, I see it flashing 16. You see me maybe turn this a little bit. I don't know whether you did or whether I was standing in the way. But I was turning this distributor a little bit while I was looking at that light because I was looking for the timing mark to get in its sweet spot. Now, that engine ran in its sweet spot and that was showing 16 degrees. So 12 to 16 seem to be fine. So yeah, by air and with my light, I think this is done. I think our electronic ignition is fitted. Not too keen on how this starts cold, but I'm putting that down to this problematic fuel injection system because it never was a very reliable fuel injection system. And we can pretty much eliminate all of the ignition now because the whole lot is new, distributor, everything. So all we've got to do is lock this lock nut down. Wait for that damn aeroplane to go over. And then I've got small work to do on this. Have a look at the horn and do an engine service and all kinds of bits and pieces. But that will be for another video. Because this video is long enough. Well, there you go. We just need to lock this little pinch bolt down now. And that will just lock that distributor off. So that don't turn. Ain't going to turn, is it? Ew, she's there now. If you're worrying about the vacuum advance, doesn't need it when you put the electronic ignition on it actually sorts the vacuum out on its own it actually sorts its advance out as you can see the old distributor didn't have a vacuum advance it just had a blank plung over so we'll put that blank and bung back on there look there we go and that will do us that's pretty much going to be it for this video hope you enjoyed the video on how to fit electronic ignition distributor if you're wondering what kit it was fitted don't get that cheap Chinese rubbish go to this these people they are absolutely brilliant AccuSpark 
And if you wonder what's in the Book of Destructions, there we go. There is your Book of Destructions. And basically, if you want to read this, you'll have to pause the video. Whoops, I think we've got a bit of wind blowing there. If you want to read all that, you'll have to just pause it. And there we go, there's your wiring. As long as you follow the steps I've done, or similar steps, to get the timing set up, to make sure you get all the HT leads back on the right place, you'll be fine. But you see that my method of just having your outer arm pointing, you can set the car to top dead centre number one, and then go number one on your cap. That's how I did it on my Daimler. But I've showed you a different way to do it now, where you just make sure your root arm is pointing to a point you can remember, and then just look what lead that goes to. And there we are. So there we are, a non-bodge video from Man Cave. I've now got to do the oil and air filter and fuel filter. Give her a little look over, have a look at the horn. Check brake fluid, give it a little service basically, have a little look, make sure everything's toward. And yeah, maybe take her for a little test drive as well. But there we go. That is going to be it for this video. I will see you guys next time. Bye bye for now. Ha ha! Wait for it. Thought you might like that little cold snippet. <laughs>